Natalie Jill, and you're listening to the Dynamic Lifestyle Podcast. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode on the Dynamic Lifestyle Podcast. We have the one and only, the beautiful Natalie Jill with us. How are you doing today? Great, thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Well, thank you for having us. You know, you invite us to your beautiful home. Chris and I were, you know, pulling up here. We're like, are we in Southern California? Like, where are we at? You know, it's just gorgeous, gorgeous community. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much for, you yeah. know, your hospitality and having us here. Yeah, yeah. awesome. And we got your dog right here too. Yeah, we hope you like jump in the podcast. <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, we just let, let's kick this off. Like we, we like to kick it off with like um, some dynam, um, rapid dynamic questions, just okay. so we just get kind of the tone going, totally. and just get more information about you. So you ready for that? I'm ready. All right. So, if the, we live in Southern California, mm -hmm. in LA, there's a lot of billboards around, right, where you're driving by. So if you had the opportunity to have a billboard that could say anything, yeah. what would you have that Ooh. billboard say and why? I guess I would have to go with you're not too old and it's not too late because okay. I get so tired of hearing that, especially as someone who's 48 years old, who deals with tons of women in that age bracket, where there's this heavy story around us being too old or it's too late, especially in LA. So yeah. that's what my billboard would say. Mm, I love it. I love it. That's okay. powerful. Yeah. Right. So how are you consuming content right now? Reading, audio, video? All of the above. Okay. I would say most, mostly audio and reading. I'm a podcast junkie. I'm always listening. And then, um, and I love to read. Okay. So what's the top podcast you're listening to? And what are you reading? Really? Well, it's my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Leveling up. Like, yeah. Let's see. I listen to a lot. I go through phases of podcasts. I'll binge listen. So I, like, I love um, Oprah's Super Soul. Oh, that's a good one. I love Jim Fortin's stuff. So I listen to all of his. Uh, James Wedmore's. Uh, there's so. I mean, there's so many. So but I'll go through. Many. I'll go through one that I'm into, and I'll binge listen to all of them, and then I'll move on to something else. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. Um, you're big on content creation. You kill it on Instagram. So, what is your number one tip for content creation? Gosh, uh, share what you're walking through. Okay. You know, I think people spend so much time trying to be something or trying to figure out like, what do I have to, you know, post or what's the code to crack. And it, what was really interesting and what grows and what grabs people's attention is when you're vulnerable and actually share what you're walking through mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from a powerful place, not like a victim standpoint, but this is what I'm walking through. This is what I'm learning. This is what I figured out. That's valuable to people. Absolutely. Yeah, and yeah. I agree. Like, I mean, for example, this morning I did like a story just, you know, saying, hey, I'm going to go get my MRI results. And yeah. I'm in a vulnerable state, but it's like, no matter what, I have to stay positive and just push through it. And, you know, a lot of people just, you know, totally appreciate that. Yes. So yeah. I agree. I'll finish the sentence. The mm -hmm. world needs more of. More golden doodles. <laughs> and look at flops. Um, you know, I mean, seriously though, unconditional love. Like that's my dog represents unconditional love, and I think the world needs more of that. Like I think we all read it, hear it, believe it, say it, and then like you get in traffic and you're flicking someone off. Right. You yeah. know, and you never know someone's story or what's really going on behind them. And I think if you can approach things from that understanding and that unconditional love that we're all here having a human experience, exactly. like it would just make things a lot better. 100%, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, what's one skill that you advocate someone should learn and why? One skill, uh, listening and okay. asking questions. Okay. So that's really two skills, but uh, like, I think one reason I do interviews and you do for your podcast is I love understanding people's stories. Yes. The more I understand somebody and ask questions and get curious, the more I learn, um, the more I have breakthroughs and awareness about things and I think so many times we're so in our own heads that we're not doing that. Mm -hmm. We're not walking around conscious and aware of other people yeah. and what's going on in their life. So I would say that skill would be really, it's changed my life really being curious about other people. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially like today too. I mean, everyone's always quick to just, you know, be the expert or have an opinion, right? Yeah. It's like sometimes stop and just listen and absorb all that information and wisdom. Totally. Like I, I'll share, like I built my brand pretty much on fat loss and nutrition. Mm -hmm. And like I interviewed a woman this morning who was 700 pounds. Wow and she lost 200 and I had all kinds of opinions before I interviewed her on like what what would cause that or what would but like I didn't bring any of those to the interview I was just very curious I was just and I learned so much that I would have never been open to if I had just approached right, it with my right. own judgment and opinion yeah. of course it's you know. a great point yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. what are two books like that are literally game-changing life-changing that you read Gosh, I don't know if I can limit it to two there's so many books that I've that I've read. Um, right now, I'm reading the Surrender Experiment. Experiment. Okay. I'm really in the word Surrender. I I have it tattooed on my arm. Okay. Who's that? So, um, oh gosh, you gotta ask me that. I guess <laughs> it's I, Amazon. It. Uh, no, my, Michael Singer. Right. Okay. That's it. Okay. So, and then what up? There's so many books. I don't even know where mm -hmm. to start. I'm I. 
anytime I hear a book that's interesting to me, I order it. So yeah. I've got more books than anyone probably. Yeah, we're Love big, big, yeah. big uh, bookworms too, so <laughs> yeah. I definitely relate. How do you stay focused in this crazy just uh, society with so many distractions? Yeah, I constantly say I'm becoming the type of person who's focused because so I was raised believing I'm ADHD. That's what I was told. You're ADHD, okay. you're ADHD, you're ADHD. You're just, Natalie's distracted. Natalie doesn't pay attention. All, so I believed that that was me and I would take actions that supported that all the time. What I know for sure is that things get accomplished when I'm laser focused. Like I think of like your third eye right there. Like mm -hmm. I just look at that and stay focused on that. That's when results happen. So it's a constant reminder to myself that what am I focused on? What am I paying attention to? And because I know that's going to expand and reminding myself that I'm becoming the type of person who is focused. Hmm. Yeah, love that. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you couldn't be in the fitness industry your whole entire mm -hmm. career, what's another path you would have went down? So I don't really think, it's so funny, everyone thinks I'm fitness, just fitness industry, but I, I feel like I started that way and I'm, I'm so much more than that. So I would say um, really personal development is more mm -hmm. where I stand. Um, if I could snap my fingers and be anything, it would be something on the motivational side. I just okay. don't know what because there's a lot of people doing that and a lot of people I don't like what they teach with that. But it would be something that's in empowerment or motivation. Sure. Yeah. Are you doing? Are you doing quite a bit of like speaking, like around the world? I do do. A, I don't. I wouldn't say quite a bit of speaking. I do speak a lot. I'm, okay. I'm pretty because of my focus word. Yeah. I'm very selective now on like okay. where I'm speaking and why I'm speaking uh, versus just doing it for like an ego purpose. Sure. Gotcha. You know? yeah. But yes, but I do love to speak. Okay. I gotcha. Yes. I can definitely see bringing the energy to a crowd. I, think, and, I yeah. love doing it. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. What do you uh, What do you fear most right now? Gosh, what do I fear most? Right now, today, I fear a surgery I'm having in two weeks, to be mm, honest with you. Yeah, we just I've, talked about that. Yeah, not my back even. I actually, <laughs> I hate even saying it, but I had I had uh, a little spot on my, next to my eye that I had no idea was anything serious. It was like, I just thought it was like a, I don't know, a pimple or something, but it was not going away, and it turned out it was skin cancer. Mm. So I have to have something called Mohs surgery, which is like, if you Google it and look at the images, it's the scariest thing on the planet. Like, I don't know what my face is gonna look like after. So I would say right now, I'm surrendering to that because I literally have no idea what my face will look like after. Because yeah, they have tough. to get it wherever it is. So yeah. I keep saying I'm the kind of person having an experience of cancer now that I have it, <laughs> and that it's gonna be gone like super quick when they go in there. I just don't know yet. Yeah, so I would say, what are you scared of? It would be something like that. I don't blame you. The unknown. <laughs> Last question, what, uh, what are you really bad at? Gosh, what am I really bad at? Okay, so this is interesting because I've always said I'm really bad at numbers. Like okay. that's my, and I also have avoided them for 47 years. And as of last year, I'm like, I am not gonna be bad at numbers anymore. It's a make or break <laughs> in my business when yeah. I do that. And I, so I'm also becoming the type of person who is obsessed with numbers. So yeah, yeah. I would say I'm not really bad at anything what I'm, other than thinking I'm bad at things. So I'm getting over that yeah. and deciding that I'm not bad at things anymore. I just yeah. get to walk through them. And so like, what kind of things did you do to like get better at knowing the numbers and like start reframing your mindset to like make that a habit? Yeah. So good question. So I'm like a typical entrepreneur that's like visionary, lots of ideas. Um, I can't shut ideas off. I'm, I, I'm a creative. I have lots and lots of ideas. And I'm also the type of person who has continually made a lot of money and then lost a lot of money, made a lot of, it's like when you talk about business growth, it's never been like that. Right. It's been like boom, 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 yeah. boom. And yeah. the crashes have been big with me. And I blamed for years, everyone but myself, like it's the wrong people, the wrong consultants, the wrong coach, the wrong <clears throat> anything, anything other than myself. And it took me a long time to really grasp that, no, it's me not paying attention to the numbers. Because I would think, oh, I'm selling or I'm creating, people love me, people that they're all that stuff. I, and I would not understand why things weren't moving in the right direction. But my gap was actually literally looking at the numbers, like what am I spending on ads? What am I spending on people? What am I spending on coaches? Mm -hmm. And what am I actually bringing in? And when I really dove into that, it sounds so simple for someone that's a numbers person, but for a creative like me that didn't want to deal with it, it was completely in my gap. And just by looking at that, I changed things significantly mm -hmm. in my business because it got a lot easier to make decisions and changes. Okay. Before you look at numbers, you're like, oh, but I like that person, but they're working hard, but it was a good idea. You know, you're attached yeah. to all the emotion around mm -hmm. it. When you look at numbers, it's like, no, this is black and white. Like it's either them or me, you exactly. know? So that was, so understanding that that was going to change things, changed me and numbers. Yeah. That's actually really, really, man, that's like gold right there. So you definitely advocate for somebody that's like an entrepreneur or something like that. You have to. Numbers. I, I, I trusted way too many people right. thinking they were looking at it and they weren't. Yeah. So when you actually like, and 
a lot, I'm not gonna say every entrepreneur because that's generalizing, but a lot of them like me, we hate P and L. She, oh, yeah. I don't, I'm like, don't send me an Excel street. I don't want, <laughs> like, I don't, but when you actually look at it and you're like, holy moly, like I took one of my funnels and I'm like, and everyone that was running the funnel was like, this is profitable, it's making money. And I kept seeing that it's making money. When I really dove into it and I looked at what I was spending on the person running the ads, what I was spending for ads and what I was paying for the person to run that funnel, mm -hmm. I was losing money. So like I was basically running a funnel to pay them. <laughs> so yeah. it doesn't, so, but I wouldn't have noticed that if I just had the conversation. But when I actually pull numbers, I noticed that. Yeah, yeah. it's a great example. So yeah, yeah. thank you for that. That's yeah, and I know we need to get better at that. Like I'm yeah. guilty of that, he yeah. is too. And it's just like I you said, numbers. like we just, we hate doing that. Like it's just yeah. not something you look forward to, but you have to. You yeah, so have even to. like running a podcast, you do it, I do it. Mm -hmm. I know exactly what it costs for me to run it. My podcast yeah. does not make me a profit, I, but I choose to do it. And I'm very aware of what I'm spending yeah. on my podcast to do it. But I was doing that in too many different areas where I wasn't even aware. Mm. So I would think like, I'd be working. My husband would say, you work so hard. Why aren't we having this is your for That's why. Because mm -hmm. it didn't matter how hard I was working if my numbers weren't lining up. Uh, yeah, uh, that's a great tip. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So Natalie, where did all this originate from? Like, I'm very curious, just like how you built this, this fitness empire. And yeah. I know it's not something that happened overnight. Mm -hmm. And maybe some people might just discover you just today or last week. And they're like, holy shit. But it's like, there's no way like this took decades of work so tell me more it's about so this. funny that you say that because it didn't <laughs> but let me explain so i so I'm, I'm 48 years old as we're recording this and uh 12 years ago my daughter was a newborn and i was in corporate america and i was working um in the dental implant field very exciting stuff I was, <laughs> but i was in sales i was sales i was a sales director um and i was good at that i was a sales trainer and sales director and i liked that and my life was very different i was I had gone to college. I was in the corporate America job. I honestly didn't know what made me happy. I was just doing what I was supposed to do. Like I heard medical sales makes money. So I did that. I went to college because my parents said to, yeah. I got married because you're supposed to, I had two, I had a daughter on the way. I had the two dogs, the white picket fence. I did all the things I was supposed mm -hmm. to do. And, um, things changed. I found myself pregnant. Um, I had gained 60 pounds, which I'm only five, two was a lot of weight. I found myself fighting with my then husband, going through a divorce. Um, and I also, my job required full-time travel. So I was super scared. I'm like, how am I going to be a single mom and travel full-time? And to top it all off, I was backwards on my house now because of some financial issues my husband and I were in. So, and the housing market had crashed. So long story short, um, my house was being foreclosed on. I was overweight. I was depressed. I was scared and I had to change my job. So I remember just being like a mess, yeah. like fully a mess. And I've had a few rock bottoms in my life. That was the first of many, but I, that was like a, that actually I'll say that was the second of others to come. But I, it was a, it was a big pivotal moment for me because I stayed depressed for three months, like really depressed. And the only reason I would get up every day was for my daughter. Like I, I'm a mom, I have to do this. And I was really depressed and it took me like three months of sitting with that until one day I just had had enough and I made a decision. I'm like, I'm not going to be this person anymore. I, I've got to figure this out. And I created a vision board Perfect. and on that vision board, I put fit girls. I put like anything that made me happy. And I would stare at that vision board and I would say, okay, if I can't remember what it le was like to feel amazing or to feel fit or to feel good, I'm going to stare at this board and I'm going to look at the girl on the board and I'm going to ask myself every day, what would she eat? What would she do? Who would she hang out with? What would she listen to? And I'm going to take those actions. And I decided to do that. And it wasn't an instant change. It was a gradual change, but I started to shift my whole energy because I stopped being the personality I was. And I started taking on the personality of the girl on the board and it started changing my life. And I went on Facebook at the time. I had maybe a hundred high school friends mm -hmm. and I went on Facebook and I said, I'm in this spot and I'm going to start sharing here what I'm eating and doing because I want accountability. Yeah. So I shared from my own authentic place without an agenda. I didn't know I was going to build social media or have a business or any of it, but people loved it because it was real and it was raw. And I was like that first original, what I'm eating. I used to post like what I ate eating yeah. or what I ate mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, people would comment on it. And that's what started it. That's what literally started the whole fitness online thing. Wow. Guys are looking to look better, feel better and perform better through realistic, enjoyable, and flexible training and nutrition programs. Look no further. Check out the link in the description box. We just released our book, The New Era of Fitness. So make sure to get your free copy in there and put it to use. Talk to you guys soon.
Yeah. And something I want to ask too is like you said you hit rock bottom like two times, mm -hmm. right? So what did like hitting the rock bottom like teach you? Yeah. And now kind of like reflecting back on it all the years and being like, was this a blessing this has or is it something you wish you could question. maybe avoid it? So I've had many failures, a lot of failures. I've had three really pivotal rock, rock bottoms. The first one was when my dad died when I was 22 and that's mm -hmm. a whole other thing. But what I learned from that is I, I remember thinking the week before he died I and mean, he died of a heart attack, so it was not expected. Yes. But I remember thinking the worst thing in my life that could happen to me would be my dad to die. And then that happened. So for me, that was a huge rock bottom. He was the one person that always believed in me or I felt that always believed in me. I was not independent at all at the time. Like my dad was my life and that happening made me fully independent. So I believe I wouldn't be here today how I am had it not, not happened. Mm -hmm. So I think things happen for you in a lot of ways too. Right. That was the first one. The second time, the fight, that just rocked everything I knew. Like I had never been in debt before and now all of a sudden I was $1.4 million in debt. I had never been overweight before and here I'm 60 pounds overweight. And my daughter weighed six pounds when she was born. So I don't care about when people say it's pregnancy weight. No, she didn't weigh, you know, it wasn't 54 pounds of pregnancy weight. That yeah. was that was fat. Yeah. And um, I was didn't know what I was gonna do for my job. I was going through a divorce. Like everything I knew was being turned upside down and I was so depressed. But my whole business literally was born from that depression because had I not changed myself and started sharing it, people wouldn't have found me and gravitated towards that. So now, you know, I had a, another recent one about a year and a half ago, which I'm happy to explain, but when that came on, I embraced it. Not, I'm not saying it was comfortable or easy, but more like what's on the other side of this? Right, right, right. What's on the other side of it? Because you're prepared for it from like the past two experiences. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because I do know that when we walk through things in life that are tough, that's what changes us. Absolutely. You know, we can't just listen to a book or hear it and apply it. It doesn't, it doesn't work that easy. Right. Yeah. But when you actually walk through something, that changes you. Yeah, if you don't yeah. mind sharing, I mean, what was the, the most recent? Yeah, most recent was my, it was a year and a half to two years ago. Um, I, a lot of things happened wrong with my life. Um, I, again, was thought I had this thriving business. We, I was generating a lot of income, like on books, it looked like a lot of income coming in, but we were, I was getting backwards financially and I couldn't figure out why. And my husband and I would fight about it. And I would say, you just don't see my vision. You don't get it. I'm working hard. I can't work any harder. But what was in my gap was the numbers. Mm -hmm. And he didn't know how to like really express that to me or pull that on. So I didn't understand that I was creating that problem. So I was getting mad at him, which created turmoil in our marriage. So now my husband didn't know if he wanted to stay married. My second husband right. didn't know if he wanted to stay married to me. My business starts failing financially. Um, and I didn't know how to get out of it. And then I ruptured a disc in my back. Yeah. So everything that I knew, again was like why is this happening to me yeah and that one was a lot harder to bounce back from because that was a lot of personal development and self-reflection and like fixing things with my husband and then walking through that with my back injury and then the business turnaround and fix that was not an easy process either that's been like a two-year process to get that dialed yeah, in absolutely wow. oh, thanks for sharing yeah. that. and then I, I i can definitely relate with you like on, on both these things because Number one, uh, your father passing away. Our, mm -hmm. our father passed away when we were 18 years old. So three days before Christmas, he wow. died in a car accident. Oh. And it was brutal. It just oh, turned our whole life us. around. My mm -hmm. mom turned to alcohol. She lost her mom three months later to Whoa. cancer. So we've been through a lot. Yeah. You know, but I don't think we would be here if yeah. that didn't happen. And yeah. there's a reason why. You know, we're turning our messes into our messages, helping people. And mm -hmm. the second thing, like I told you, I'm going through this ankle injury, right? Mm -hmm. And on top of that, I'm not afraid to you know share on, on this yeah. that you know I, I've just gone through you know a breakup with my girlfriend that mm. I've been with almost three years. So it's like a ton of bricks. Has totally. Hit me. It's like I'm still here fighting. You know, it's yeah. like I got knocked down, but it's like I'm gonna keep getting up and keep fighting. Well, you that's know? you know it's funny because people look on social media and they'll see this big number and they they just assume they're like yeah. oh you're famous or yeah, you're yeah. you have all this money or everything in great. life is perfect. And I'm like <laughs> there's nobody in life that doesn't walk through pain and stuff. It's just that some people hide it and fake it. Some people share a little too much and yeah. come from a victim standpoint. And some, it's just like, it's how to, how are people walking through it? But I share a lot because, and I'm very aware to not share from a victim standpoint. Yeah. Like I'll, I'll share like, this is what I'm walking through and this is what I'm doing about it. Yeah. Um, I don't have to know all the answers, but I, I share it because it, it makes me more human and relatable to people. And we all are walking through stuff and I'll walk through more stuff. Like I didn't expect that I thing to come up. Like there's always yeah. going to be stuff. Right. And you know, we're all human and we all have it. And how are we growing and learning from it? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So what would you say to somebody that just like, 
they want to build a fitness empire mm -hmm. like you built and they just don't understand like how much sacrifice and how much work it really takes to do what would be like maybe like the best advice just knowing you know what you know now like some mm -hmm. steps to maybe the right direction yeah so it's interesting so one i would say don't be attached to a fitness empire so like okay. i i didn't even know what i was building when i was starting it it evolved into you know i started with recipes so i was and i ended up becoming a nutritionist so i was a nutrition expert and then that became fat loss i was more fat loss expert and then people want to know what i'm doing with my workouts so i made workout dvds so like it kept going and evolving so then next thing you know i'm like a fitness expert but I never set out to be a fitness expert. Mm. And then from there, that really morphed into, okay, that it's really more than workouts and nutrition. It's a lot of mindset, but people don't care. They don't want to know that they have to change their mindset. So walking through those, you know, th that way. Yeah. So I wouldn't even say I have a fitness business, although you could Google me and it'll say fitness business, but I'm going to tell anyone listening, don't be attached to what you're creating, be attached to what you're solving and what you're standing for and what you're helping. Mm -hmm. Because if you have, if there's a problem that you can solve, that's your gift. Yeah. So share that and it doesn't have to be a fitness empire or yeah. a personal development. It doesn't yeah. have to have a label. I love yeah. that. Wow. I like that. That's even too like a good point for just like why a personal brand is so important. Yeah. Right? Because again, at the end of the day, people are buying you, you know, not exactly totally. what the product is and this and that. Totally. They're buying you. Um, and it's also, I could go both ways on a personal brand. I very much built Natalie Jill as my brand, but that's also been challenging because as I've evolved that I'm not just fitness, people are still thinking Natalie Jill is fitness, yeah, you know? Yeah, so yeah. like, <laughs> so, so that's where it's challenging too, where if you have a name for things, that's a lot easier to transition. So like my new community is called aging in reverse. It's yeah. not my name. It's the aging in reverse community because that's not attached to just being Natalie Jill. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So let's stay on that topic. Yeah. But let's let's talk more about that. Okay. That that, that, that program, um, the sure. movement that you're trying to create. Why, yeah. Why, why are you creating that, and who's that for? So once again, I'm walk. I'm going to share what I'm walking through. So okay. I'm 48 years old, and the first thing that comes up when I say I'm 48 is people either say, "What? You're 48?" And what comes up for me is, "What's 48 supposed to look like?" Because right. to me, it's what it looks like. Or they say, "Like you look really good for 48." And again, I'm like, "But what's?" A 48 is supposed yeah. to look like like to me this is what 48 is supposed to look like yeah. like I take care of myself and I'm thriving and doing the best that I can and what really was coming up is is how there's such a weird societal thing around age like especially in Southern California mm -hmm. and in LA like you're too old all of a sudden and I'm like but, but is that people telling us that or is that us believing it or, or what is that and I have so many friends that are my age or older that are thriving still. They're like fully living their life. So I'm like, I've got to like bring that more mainstream. Like, how do we do that? And when I dove in, it started as, okay, how do I have people like look their best always? Like, let's get into aging fat loss. Let's get into how do we order the wrinkles? Like maybe I need to interview plastic surgeons. And like, you know, I started going down that road. And what hit me was, wait a minute, that is not the thing that's making people live and thrive and feel useful. It's not. If you look at the people that are 60, 70, 80, that are still thriving, it's not because they had all this plastic surgery and did all these things to themselves. In fact, those people can look kind of freaky. Mm -hmm. You know, they, oh, yeah. they still look older like they did stuff. Mm -hmm. What it is, is the people that are truly living and enjoying their life. Like I have friends that are surfing in their you know, 60s and right. they, they are living and enjoying life. And I'm like, okay, there's something about fun and living and thriving that are making people look and feel more youthful. Yeah. And I started really embracing that and I'm like, okay, but why aren't more people doing that? And what was coming up for me is this whole fear of judgment, this whole people pleasing thing, this whole like societal, I have to fit in. Mm -hmm. And I really started diving into how do we break away from that? So I really developed the aging in reverse community around that. What I found though is people need that. They don't know that they want that yet. So okay. they still are coming to me initially for fat loss, nutrition, the looking good conversation. And then once they're in with me, we go through all of that because that really is that secret. Yeah. How do you kind of sprinkle that in though? Yeah. Because I know what you're talking about with that resistance. Like for 10 years, we were coaches for fitness and we tried sprinkling in the mindset, mm -hmm. the personal development, but there's so much resistance. So what I found is in all my programs, like in my full body reset program, the people did not come for that, but they always said that they, the part they loved most was the mindset. They're like, mm -hmm. I got so mm -hmm. much from the mindset shifts. Like, so, so I know it's incredible. So what I do, like with the aging in reverse community, I almost have to bribe people with the nutrition and fitness. Like I literally, like right now I'm doing it where there's a $10 trial. They get like all my workouts and nutrition just to get them in because I want them to try this on. So I'm like, I believe so much that if you feel you need the workouts and nutrition, I'm just gonna give it to you. Right. Like here it is. All I want you to do in exchange is just take on my, I call it like a 10 day dive challenge where we really break down 
what's holding you back in different areas of your life. So once people go through that challenge, they get it. And then they want more of that. I like that. Yeah, I like that. And that's why we're huge on that too. I'm always going to say, you know, build the six pack in your mind first, then yes. build the six pack on the outside. Because just think about how many people nowadays just they they lack that emotional and mental resilience. Totally. You know, we're not taught that by our parents. We're not taught that in the school system. So, so true. It's it's huge, especially nowadays, like kids growing up. I mean, it's it could, it's brutal. Yeah. yeah. And do you also say, do you think the, the aging in reverse? Like, do you think like to like reframe your mindset around that is it is it a mindset thing is it a lifestyle thing is it like your circle that you're around like it's a combination of all of it mm -hmm. so like what i do in aging in reverse is every month i have a theme that mm -hmm. i think is an important thing we need to break through like month one um that because we, we just opened this community we're doing confidence because i think confidence is a big thing like yeah. women oh, yeah. lose their confidence as they're getting older mm -hmm. so we're i'm addressing that i'm still addressing nutrition and workouts like that's all still there but i'm going to talk into that and then I'm gonna do a whole month on just people pleasing in general. Like how do we break through that? Because we're putting everybody else first instead of ourselves. And how do we get out of this judgment? Why are we so scared of being judged? It doesn't mean I won't talk into cosmetic things, but like, I mean, I feel like, like I, this, is, this happened to me. I noticed I was at the beach with a bunch of people and what was going through my head, this is like a year ago, is I don't want to go in the water and have fun because I start thinking about like my spray tan and my hair and like and it was such a weird conversation I was noticing going on in my head. I'm like, okay, so I want to look a certain way to look youthful and like I'm having fun, but I'm not actually having fun because I'm so worried about what I'll, like it was such yeah. a weird realization <laughs> I was having and I'm like, what? I just noticed it. I'm like, what is that and why is that a common thing? Like I want to just go have fun. Yeah. And then when I jumped in the ocean and had fun, it was like such a fun day, you know? So it's just little things like that. Yeah. And then making a, I made a tradition recently that on my birthday every year, I was gonna do something crazy and outrageous, even scary that I've never done before, just so I can experience That's life. Cool. So I, I've like now jumped out of an airplane, I've paraglided, I've parasailed, I've, I got a tattoo on my birthday last year. I just <laughs> do like, what's the thing that I thought I would never do that's like, crazy and out there. What do you have on the list for the next birthday? Well, I just had this one and that was okay. a hard one. Okay. <laughs> but I've done like, I just, it started being really fun for me. Like I get scared to yeah. death living it, doing it, but I remember every moment of those things and I'm fully living in it. And that's, that's awesome. what I think brings on the youth. That's yeah. awesome. That's, that's what it's all about. It's just like experiences yeah. and adventure. Yeah. Like that. so I gotta stop hanging out with you on my birthday. <laughs> yeah. But I just, I really got, and look, I care about how I look too. I'm yeah. not saying I'm yeah, not gonna sure. go to the dermatologist. and like, I love all that. I just was getting a little too wrapped up in that. Yeah. And that's not the answer. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, yeah, it's a great point. And I, that's why I love what you're doing with the aging reverse, because it seems like those themes mm -hmm. are just like the root of the problems. Yeah. It's really going on inside people's core. It totally is. Yeah. The, the issue is getting them to do it. Like they, they don't want to hear it, but, yeah. but it really, when they have that switch, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. Let's move on to uh, content yeah. creation and social yeah. media. Uh, I asked you a question earlier about that, just like a go-to tip, but mm -hmm. let's dig into this more because I see you do put a lot into it, right? Mm -hmm. And you talked about being vulnerable, being yourself, being authentic, which I totally agree. I'm always gonna say put out valuable, intentional, shareable yeah. content. Uh, so do you have like a social media calendar? Uh -huh. like just How do you structure so that? I don't know if you'll like my answer here, but I really believe this and I've had arguments with people about this. Uh -huh. I get that it makes sense to have a content calendar. Mm -hmm. I, my brain doesn't operate that way. Okay. My best posts and content are in the moment. Cool. And when it comes to me, I gotta like stop everything and do it. So like I'll be walking some days and I have an idea and I'm like, I have to like stop and write it out and that ends up being an amazing post. When I try to think through like, what am I gonna do on Thursday? What am I gonna do? I can do it, it's just not my best stuff. Yeah. So I believe when you have those moments, go for them. Like when you have that insight, go for it. And if you don't want to post it right then, write it down in your notes or something, but you have to do that. I also keep a running list on my phone of ideas that I get mm -hmm. um, or topics or questions that people ask me that I want to make something around. Yeah. And the scariest things to post are the best things to post. Like for instance, and I've shared this many times, I've done several videos on it. Um, I have, people know me from my abs. They're like, they see my abs on a cover or they're like, how does she have abs? I've done videos where I squeeze my stomach together to show like what happens after you have a baby. Like, yes, I have abs and I still have loose skin. So let me show you. And it's like a shock factor for people just because it's real. Mm -hmm. And there's other women that would be like, I would never do that. I would never <laughs> share that. I'm like, but that's what people want to see. Yeah. They want to mm -hmm. see the real. Yeah, yeah it's exactly. Right. Too. So what would you say to somebody like, cause we have a lot of um, students in our inner circle program where they're scared to put out content. They're so scared of like getting judged or they, they want some sort of validation yeah. before they do it. So what would you say to somebody that's scared to like, 
hop on a on the camera or even just like post something that's on their mind without having I'm gonna like, give a mean girl a response. <laughs> Get over it and do it anyway. Yeah, and yeah. the reason is people are gonna judge no matter what. Yeah. Oprah gets judged. Yeah. Tony Robbins gets judged. Like everyone gets judged, no matter what. If you you could be amazing, you could suck, you're gonna get judged. So why not give something valuable? And I'm also gonna throw this out for anyone that's like holding back. It's selfish to hold back yeah. because every single person has value to add yeah. on something. Mm -hmm. You have value to add by you not sharing it. There's somebody that you're not helping. I agree. Yeah, and let's let's stay on that real quick because you posted something mm -hmm. five days ago, mm -hmm. and it was a really powerful post. It was like a baby picture, and mm -hmm. then you talked about like all like the yeah. like the hits you've taken, like how many times you've gotten knocked down. But then you said too, even till this day, you still get like you know hate comments oh, and yeah, people attacking you. So. I mean, what would you say to somebody that is going through something like that? Or yeah, so this took me a while to get, but I used to get really triggered by hate comments. Mm -hmm. And this is what I figured out. When I tell my truth, it doesn't trigger me. When I'm hiding something or not being fully mm -hmm. authentic, I'm triggered. Gotcha. So for instance, if somebody were to say to you, me, your abs are Photoshopped, it would not trigger me at all because I know darn well my abs are not Photoshopped and I'm on video. And if they think it's Photoshopped, that's their issue. Mm -hmm. However, if I put like a hugely edited picture up and they said your abs are photoshopped, even though my abs aren't, I might get triggered because I know deep down like that picture is edited or whatever yeah. it is. So when you're truly telling the truth, you're not going to be triggered. Like if you take a stand for something and someone doesn't like it, you at least took a stand. Yeah. Like do you think Donald Trump gives, cares at all what people think about him? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what you, if you like or don't like yeah. him, you got to hand it to him oh, that yeah. in his own way, he's a leader. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm not, again, I'm, right. whether you like him or not, doesn't yeah. matter. But like, he doesn't care that people don't like him. Right. He doesn't care. And to be a, Martin Luther King, people didn't like him. Gandhi, people didn't like. There's a, Jesus, people didn't like. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't yeah. matter. You're going to be a leader. You're going to make a difference in the world. People are going to judge you and not like you. And you have to get over it. And I'm not saying you're not going to have feelings and it's not going to hurt, but stand in your truth and you get over it a lot faster. Yeah. I would say drop the mic, but I don't want you to break it. I'll say let's pour some water on the mic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that. Yeah. So yeah. thanks for sharing that. Yeah. yeah. So I, I want to kind of switch gears to like developing thick skin and like entrepreneurism. Um, what What is it that like brings out like your killer instinct? Because I can see it in you that you have mm -hmm. like a, a fiery side, a killer instinct, like very competitive. So what brings that yeah. out? Like Michael Jordan, obviously fourth quarter comes, he's cutthroat. He doesn't give a totally. shit. He's going at it. He's going to kill. Right. Mm -hmm. So what brings out that? Like, you know, that I don't, it's so interesting. I actually don't think I'm competitive. I, I don't like competition. Um, so I, I don't know if that's the right word, but I, I'm relentless. I'll say that. Mm -hmm. And I'm determined and I get focused and I get committed, but I'm not competitive. Like I'm the first person to like go cheer on other people or to lift them up or to comment. Like I have, I hear people all the time like they don't want to comment or follow somebody because like they think somehow that hurts them. Like it doesn't like it doesn't make sense. Like the more you give and help other people, the more it helps you yeah. too. So I I work to live from that place. Um, less than competitive, what I more than competitive, I I would say I used to battle jealousy a lot. Mm -hmm. So I would say that like in, I used to look at somebody doing better than me and get jealous. Like how and so it was a comparison thing. Yeah. And so what I shifted that to is gratitude and telling them how amazing they are and that changed okay. everything so when i see that when something evokes that in me now um i go instantly to how can i compliment them or support them yeah. and it changes it yeah. that's a great way to look at it like yeah. just reframing yeah. i was gonna ask where do you think that jealousy like came from i think it's human nature that we think somebody else is better than us or doing one up sure. when i started my business i didn't even know that other people did ebooks you know my first ebook made almost three million dollars and I had no idea how to even do an ebook. I just did it um, without Facebook ads. And like, I mean, that was over time it did that. Yeah. But it was, but my point is I didn't even know that comparison existed there. Like I didn't know that people had fitness businesses online. I didn't know there was ebooks. I didn't know there was a whole world of that. So I didn't know. When I started knowing, I would get into jealousy. Like, oh, I have to do it that way. So yeah. I would say if that's what you're feeling, either stop looking at it or to flip it and reframe it and say, how can I learn from that person? How can I support them? How can I compliment them? Yeah. And like, get on their radar. Yeah. They'll probably help you too. Yeah, it's just about, about having humility. Yeah. It really is. Um, what are you willing to sacrifice for a cost? And the way I like to frame this is, let's take a boxer for example, right? So they get the shit beaten out of them. They're taking hits to the head to where they could actually sacrifice their life. Mm -hmm. But they're willing to do that because they see the bigger picture. They're making more money. That's what they like doing, their legacy. So what are you willing to sacrifice for a cost? God, I don't know. 
I don't know that anymore. I think I used to sacrifice everything. Okay. And I've changed. Um, I would say I'm, I'm willing to sacrifice non-important things. Like to me, I'm very clear on my priorities now and what's important to me. Yeah. And those come first. And I'm willing to say no to a lot more. Um, that I know what I am. I'm willing to sacrifice ego. Let's go okay. with that. Because I used to say yes to things because of my ego. Like, oh, someone so wants me to speak, or someone so wants me to do this, or something. Like, I just I let that dictate what I said yes to. Yeah. Now it's the opposite. Like, is that serving my higher uh, value? Is that serving my vision? Is that supporting what I want to do? Right. Like, I look at those questions now, and I say no to things that are just ego driven. Okay, I love that. Mm -hmm. All right. So before we ask the last question, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, I just want to commend you and say thank you so much for having us over. I truly appreciate it. And thank just you. everything that you've been doing, you know, for the past decade and just that, not decade, but like your, your whole career and just, you know, from hitting rock bottom two times like that to be vulnerable mm -hmm. and like share that on your podcast, on our podcast and just everything you've overcome. It's really inspiring. So I really respect that. And again, thank you so much for your time on the podcast. Yeah, thank Absolutely. you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Um, so what does it mean to live a dynamic lifestyle? Uh, to be alive, to experience what we're here. You know, I think so many times we stay focused, me included, in our heads and what's wrong or what's not working or worrying or, but like to truly get out there and connect with people and live and experience life, that would be a dynamic lifestyle because I, I honestly used, to, I thought honestly two and a half years ago, I would have said I'm an introvert and I no longer say that because I think that's a cop out. I think, I think so too. Yeah, I, I think so saying you're an introvert is, is hiding and you're in pain and you don't really even know what's on the other side of that when you yep. connect with people. And that doesn't mean you have to go to big parties and like do that, but I mean, just getting out and connecting with people, there's so much in that. So I really don't believe I'm an introvert anymore. I believe I was somebody that was hurting and I was in my ego and in my head. And so I thought I didn't like connecting with people. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. And I think there's so much more. Uh, we're here to connect with people. We're here to serve. We're here to add our gifts, to share mm -hmm. value, add value. And I think it's selfish to stay in our heads. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely used to say I'm an introvert. Yeah. yeah. And it's not true. Yeah. It's a yeah. pain it's a pain thing. Yeah. yeah, I agree. So where can our listeners support you? And is there anything that we yeah. can support you with that maybe you're you have going on right now and Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, my age, if you're interested in aging in reverse, it's okay. AgingInReverse.me. Okay. And would love for you to check that out and try out that site because I think you would be pleasantly surprised with what's there. Um, other than that, my podcast is leveling up, creating everything from nothing. And then my website's nataliejill.com. Okay. And then you can find me on social everywhere, Natalie Jill Fit. All right. So we'll have that all linked up in the show notes. Awesome. Once again, Natalie, thank you so much for thank coming you. on. And guys, go follow Natalie, see what she's doing. She's awesome. Until next time. Thank you. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. If you guys are looking to look better, feel better, and perform better through realistic, enjoyable, and flexible training and nutrition programs, look no further. Check out the link in the description box. We just released our book, The New Era of Fitness, so make sure to get your free copy in there and put it to use. Talk to you guys soon.